Tonight, pop-up vaccination hubs set to open up at schools across the Spencer Gulf, while Broken Hill goes nearly a week without any new COVID cases. From our seven Spencer Gulf studios, your nightly news with Ruby Kamane begins now. Good evening. Spencer Gulf schools are to be included in the state government's new COVID-19 student vaccination program. The pop-up clinics are being rolled out across South Australia to combat the state's low youth jab rate. Pop-up COVID vaccination hubs established at more than 20 schools across South Australia before the end of the term. I'm glad that they'll have the opportunity to be vaccinated. And the message I'm getting very strongly from young South Australians is that they want to get vaccinated. COVID vaccinations available to students aged 12 to 18 years old, helping to raise the state vaccination rate for the cohort, with data showing just over 27% of those aged 12 to 15 have had their first jab. Well, we're really keen to get every single person that's eligible to be vaccinated, vaccinated as quickly as possible. Uh, we certainly want it done uh, in the next couple of weeks, and that's why we're starting this program at 20 schools. Described by the Premier as a six-week blitz, the program aiming to vaccinate older students before the summer break. With Port Augusta Secondary and Port Lincoln High among the schools participating in the program. The program for the public schools uh, is about half um, country, half uh, city. There's a particular focus on schools in areas with particular socioeconomic challenges. The vaccination centres will also be open on Saturdays as places for the wider community to also get vaccinated. If we can do our bit to, to increase the safety of our staff, our students and the community in general, then in fact I'm uh, quite looking forward to helping out and doing our bit. Edward McCarroll, 7 Spencer Golf News. Meanwhile, Broken Hill has now gone six days without a new COVID case. It was a donut day for the whole Far West LDH with no new infections recorded to 8pm last night. There are only 20 active cases in Broken Hill, but that news comes with a warning. Health signalling out the city for its low testing rates, averaging fewer than 100 swabs a day. Now calling on the community to come out in force and get tested even without symptoms. Many of us are in need of a holiday right now, and Tasmania will pay South Aussies to do just that. The state teaming up with the federal government for a Tassie holiday voucher program offering $300 to spend on accommodation and tours during November and December. There are only 10,000 vouchers available through Tourism Tasmania, which will be allocated in a ballot. Broken Hill residents aren't eligible to apply due to border restrictions. The Ambulance Paramedics Union has raised concerns over the number of ambulances available in Wyala. On Monday night, the only two ambulances in the city were reportedly tied up with existing emergencies, with the union now pushing the state government to do more. Ensuring no one in Wyala is left behind during a medical emergency. The Ambulance Employees Association of South Australia renewing calls for another ambulance to be stationed in the city. Wyala really does need another um, emergency ambulance to have three ambulances for that community and the area needs an extra transfer ambulance as well to help move patients to and from the hospitals. According to the AEA, a status red alert was issued for the region on Monday night with not enough ambulances to meet the demand. Local paramedics said to be stretched to the limit with three life-threatening cases shared between two ambulances. The shortages of resources in Wales is um, you know, becoming more apparent. We've had multiple examples recently of patients waiting far too long for an ambulance where all of Wyler ambulances are tasked. The union saying members are incredibly frustrated with their high workload. Wyler has had increasing workload for a number of years now um, and it's becoming uh, unmanageable and patients are being put at risk. In a statement, Health Minister Stephen Wade says six new paramedics will be recruited for the city next year, while an SA ambulance spokesperson confirmed a Monday situation, calling it sudden but short. Mark Zita, 7 Spencer Golf News. The president of Wireless Football League has unexpectedly died. Jack Felthausen has been the leader of the Wireless Football League since 2015. In a statement, the league extends its sincerest condolences to his wife Mary and his family. Also saying Jack's commitment and service to the Wireless Football League and community was far-reaching. Still to come tonight, more concerns raised over the proposed desalination plant at Boston Bay. And the Flinders Rangers Council receives key funding to divert heavy load trucks.
Welcome back. Senator Rex Patrick visited the Spencer Gulf today, joining stakeholders from Port Lincoln's aquaculture industry. The group taking to the water to show the Senator the divisive and controversial site for SA Water's proposed desalination plant. A convoy of boats out opposing SA Water's proposed desalination plant at Billy Lights Point. Key stakeholders gathering support from a South Australian Senator. On the face of it, it seems to me as though uh, this isn't the right site. Uh, it's got too much industry around it in terms of fishing industry. Senator Patrick saying SA Water has known the need for a desalination plant for years. SA Water have had since 2008 uh, to get a plan in place and actually they've failed to do so. Uh, now it appears as though they're rushing and we all know what happens when you rush. Also saying SA Water is taking the easy option. I think it's uh, likely being selected for convenience and for cost. Uh, that's not the right approach here. We've got to do this uh, sensibly, properly. Aquaculture experts making their feelings clear. But now it seems to be coming closer. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's ridiculous what happened. Hagen Steer wanting the proposal squashed. Ought to be stopped forthwith, not if and buts, and if the government keeps on going down this line, there will be severe consequences in the future. SA Water is expected to make a decision in the coming weeks. Dylan Smith, 7 Spencer Gulf News. New funding from the National Heavy Vehicle Regulators is aiming to make roads around Corn and Hawker safer. The project planning to divert larger trucks onto more suitable roads. Big fast and essential to the Australian economy. New funding, however, set to help councils torn between residential safety and the need to keep trucks moving. And these roads, they're not designed for that sort of traffic and it, legally they really can't drive on the roads. With more B-double trucks travelling through, the Flinders Ranges Council has partnered with the Heavy Vehicle Safety Initiative to deliver a risk analysis of freight paths. The project, one of 28 successful freight safety initiatives to receive grant funding from the federal government. One of those great little grants that uh, we were really hoping to get because uh, as a small council we just can't afford to carry out these sorts of, this sort of research. The project will assess all roads around Quorn and Hawker to see which ones can safely support larger trucks. Then, key routes will be established to divert trucks of specified combinations away from unsafe roads. They talk to all the property owners, we see where these trucks need to go, how they go, and then we can work out the best roads that they travel on, the safest routes that they can take. The project, set to increase the safety of pedestrians, property owners and truck drivers alike. Edward McCarroll, 7 Spencer Golf News. Looking for work? Well, Port Pirie hosted a local jobs and career expo today, giving students, job seekers and the community an opportunity to connect with employers. Organisers say the expo was key in combating some of the workforce shortages experienced in the region. Connecting job seekers with employers. I've only been in there for a few minutes and I've already seen a few that might be good for me. I'm here to look for work, for find a job. I am not a spring chicken, but I'm still able to work. Port Pirie today hosting the local Jobs and Career Expo, providing an opportunity for local businesses to engage face-to-face -face with prospective employees. Also giving students the chance to explore local careers and training pathways. We want to get more people into work. We've got the jobs, you know, employers are screaming out for workers um, and we have got people in our community looking for work. We've just got to bridge that gap somehow. So we're hoping that people actually walk away today with a job. Max Cranes is one of 36 exhibitors at the Expo, looking to fill two new traineeship positions as part of the new Max Academy. The Max Academy is designed to provide young people um, and people who are unemployed or underemployed with an opportunity to get into our industry. It's hoped the Expos will help combat the region's workforce challenges. 
Employers are finding it quite difficult to get people into work at the moment and I think, you know, job seekers are facing lots of different barriers to getting into work. Another expo will be held in Kadena tomorrow. If you're sitting at home going, I want a job, well the job's not going to come to you. You've got to go and find it. <laughs> or talk to people and find out what training you need to do to get into that field. Definitely encourage people to go because it's such a beneficial thing. Katrina Musson, 7, Spencer Golf News. Stay with us after the break. Menindee prepares for an influx of tourists with lockdown ended. And a prestigious art prize returns to Wyala after five years. Hello again. Many Broken Hill locals will be loading up their swags and heading up the river this weekend, enjoying their newfound freedoms. Businesses in Menindee keen to see visitors return, but asking people to make sure they're following the rules. Lockdown has lifted and the lakes are full. A weekend by the Menindee Lakes has never been more appealing. We've had uh, national and international focus on the water in the lakes and they look incredible when you drive around at the moment. Regional travel is now permitted for the fully vaccinated and Broken Hill locals are keen to hit the road and see this site firsthand. But Menindee has had just one COVID case which is believed to be linked to a known source. The community looking forward to welcoming visitors but asking them to keep that in mind. Just be aware that the, the community out here is, is not unwelcoming, but there's still a heightened sense of risk. The lockdown began at a time when tourism around the lakes was booming, but Rob Gregory says he doesn't expect to begin operating his tours until next year due to COVID rules and a summer off-season. Menindi has one of the highest vaccination rates in the country, locals waiting for other areas to catch up. South Australia is fairly low, so uh, you know they've got a lot of catching up to do on their tourists that we get. Um, we also get tourists from um, Victoria, so there's an issue there. With travel comes an increased risk of COVID spreading, but many in this community just want to get back to normal. Lachlan Itta, 7 Spencer Golf News. The Clare Valley town of Burra is set to host some of the most notable female names in Australian music. In a first for the region, the Copper and Stone Music Festival will present one of the biggest live music lineups outside of Adelaide. An all female lineup set to take to the stage. I haven't seen an all female event in South Australia, so we thought we might just do that. Burra will host the Copper and Stone Music Festival early next year, featuring some big names in Australian music. Kate Sobrano, Wendy Matthews, Malia Barn, Rachel Beck, Hussey Hicks, and many more. Council was very excited to be involved um, with this event. Obviously, it's a first for our region. It's not a country music show. This is your general Australian pop rock, you know, a bit of indie um, kind of stuff. There's a little bit of blues in there. Supported by the Regional Council of Goida and Neonian, it's hoped the event will help boost the local economy after a tough COVID year, while also helping the live music industry get back on its feet. We're sort of expecting sort of a 70% crowd from out of the region, which will be great. So we hope they kind of stay a bit longer than one night and have a chance to look around and explore what we've got um, to look at here. The event will take place on February 5 at Paxton Square, certainly one you won't want to miss. If, if you're thinking about coming along, sure, grab a ticket. I said there's only a thousand of them. Tickets are on sale now via Mosh Ticks. Katrina Musson, 7, Spencer Golf News. The Steel City's most prestigious art competition has awarded its first major prize winner after a five-year break. This year's Hummock Hill Art Prize, going to an artwork focusing on human emotions. Capturing the range of emotions of a well-known Australian artist on this piece of canvas. This year's Hummock Hill Art Prize, awarded to Philip Lewis for his artwork called Emotions, portraying the personality of Ben Quilty. I got the phone call um, Friday night and yeah, I was dumbfounded. I feel a bit embarrassed because there's a heap of really good art here uh, at this exhibition and uh, yeah, I didn't expect it. More than 90 people attending an event last Friday night with Kimber artist Teresa Ramsey judging this year's entries. Mr Lewis's artwork picked as the cream of the crop in the competition. Oh, the standard was excellent. We've had some um, really, really top-notch works. 
Paul Ellens' sculpture, Cuttlefish Sway, winning the Industrial Arts Award, while Justin Vlachulis was awarded the Young Emerging Artist Award. Eileen Jones's artwork, Hands of Wisdom, taking home the People's Choice Award. It used to be called the Hummock Hill Painting Prize and now it's the Art Prize and that made all the difference. We've got digital work, sculpture uh, and textual work as well. The paintings will remain on display at the Wyala Art Gallery for the rest of the month. Mark Zeta, 7 Spencer Gulf News. Stay with us after the break. Lachlan Issa will share all the latest prices at the petrol pump and we'll have all the weather details with Alex Sykes. Welcome back. Some of South Australia's best tennis players showcased their skills in Port Lincoln over the weekend. Tennis SA launching its summer season with an all-star exhibition match against some of the city's best. Showcasing the next generation of tennis talent. Tennis SA launching its 2021-2022 State League season on the Air Peninsula. This concept came about to really raise the profile and take it out to regional areas. It's also an opportunity for us to see the talent in, in the regional areas too. The state's highest level competition visiting regional South Australia for the first time. Junior players getting the opportunity to learn from the best. Well, it's extremely important that we have um, positive role models for our younger people to come across and, and watch and see how people can be in a positive environment where they're going out and trying to strive for the best that they can be. On Saturday, the State League players in Port Lincoln's best were split into Team Red and Team Blue. The exhibition hit out came down to the wire. With the tie locked at five rubbers apiece, Team Blue were crowned champions on sets. It's fantastic, honestly. It's a really good feeling after a fantastic day of tennis filled with you know some highs and lows. Um, it's really great to come out on top for the, for the first round. Tennis SA pleased with the support from locals. Yeah, the community's been outstanding today. The crowds that we had today were consistent throughout the whole day and it's just been amazing. The organisation is hoping to come back to the region in coming years. Dylan Smith, 7 Spencer Gulf News. Global oil prices have surged to their highest in more than four years and that's impacting here in our own backyard. Some experts predicting petrol prices could smash previous records. Lachlan Isha has the latest from our region in Fuel Watch. It does seem local prices have been impacted. It's another week of price hikes right across our region and the jumps are larger than what we've seen of late. Starting with unleaded and will single Broken Hill out, a litre of unleaded will set you back almost $1.64 a litre. Across the Spencer Gulf, we're seeing a few areas close in on that $1.60 bracket. Port Augusta is the closest, up to $1.59 a litre. Wyala's seen a jump of $0.04 cents to $1.58. Port Pirie's had the largest price increase, now around $1.56 a litre. You can expect to pay that in Port Lincoln. Kadena, $1.55, up $0.04 cents from last week and if you're heading into Adelaide over the weekend prices have gone up there as well to $1.52 a litre. Over to diesel where the numbers are pretty similar to unleaded but with some huge jumps. Wyala has gone from $1.52 a litre all the way up to $1.58. Port Pirie also seeing a large jump now at $1.54. Across the rest of the region prices have changed by about $0.04 cents a litre. You're looking at $1.57 in Port Lincoln, $1.58 in Port Augusta and $1.52 in Kadena. Diesel in Broken Hill also reaching above $1.60 a litre. City prices are middle of the road compared to our region at $1.54. And the bad news keeps on coming for the Silver City when we look at auto gas. A six cent jump to $1.07 a litre. Kadena has hit $1.11. Port Lincoln and Wyala also recording increases. They're both a smidge under a dollar. Port Augusta and Port Piri unchanged at $1.04 and $1.07 a litre respectively. Drivers in the capital also feeling it in the hip pocket. A dollar two there. Now remember that these prices are the regional averages and do not reflect any one particular outlet. And if you do spot unleaded diesel or auto gas cheaper, be sure to let us know on our Facebook page. Time now to take a look at what's happening in the weather. Here's Alex Sykes. 
Thanks, Ruby, and happy hump day, everyone. Well, it was rain jacket kind of weather today. Showers across most of the region. From 3 p.m., Port Augusta was 20, well, was 18, and Cooper PD was sunny and 20 degrees. Looking further out now, Port Lincoln, Woodna, and Adelaide all reached 16 degrees. Port Pirie was 19, Kadena, Cleve, and Clare were all 14, and it was a warmer one in Broken Hill for their first week out of lockdown, 22 degrees there. Taking a look at the satellite image now cloudy over central and southern areas a low as well as a front and trough are causing showers and storms skies are generally clear in the north moving on to tomorrow's weather outlook now and we'll start with the gulf waters west to northwesterly winds 15 to 20 knots seas one meter and south to southwesterly swell below one meter the showers will continue tomorrow port lincoln showers easing 17 degrees cleave is set to reach a high of 16 degrees and would showers and 17. Windy and Wowler with 18 degrees there. Port Augusta and Kadena both showers also 18 degrees. Port Piri reach 18. Clare will be just atop of 12 degrees and Broken Hill a shower or two with a max of 17. Taking a look further through the week now looking at Friday now. Port Augusta possible shower 21. Port Piri and Wowler both to reach a top of 20 degrees. Cooper PD mostly sunny 23. Clearing up on the weekend with mainly fine conditions across the board on Saturday. Temperatures also heating up slightly, sitting between the high teens to mid 20s. Port Augusta and Woodna both partly cloudy and 27 on Sunday. Port Pirie mostly sunny and 24. Port Lincoln partly cloudy with 19 degrees. So still a couple of wet days to endure Ruby, but looks like it's clearing up in time for the weekend. And that's all the weather from me for tonight. Lovely, thanks for that Alex. And that's the local news this Wednesday evening. Thanks for joining us. I'll have updates later. Until then, enjoy your evening. Good night.